dear students in the last class we discussed regarding the echosonauts in today's this thing video i'll be discussing regarding angiotensin so this angiotensin normally it is an octa peptide octa normally stands for eight so it consists of eight peptides and this angiotensin is normally synthesized from the precursor precursor indicates the starting material which is called as angiotensinogen the precursor is known as angiotensinogen okay so this angiotensinogen this is normally a circulating protein it is a circulating protein which is normally synthesized in the liver it's a protein which is circulating protein which is normally synthesized in the liver this angiotensinogen is normally converted to angiotensin 1 first then this rapidly it is converted into angiotensin 2 then it is converted to angiotensin 3 Okay, so here the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 normally occurs in the presence of the enzyme which is called as angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay, so normally here this angiotensin 1 doesn't have much of the role in the activity whereas this angiotensin 2 it has got a major functions or major actions in the body okay and this is of short life because the action is very fast within one minute and immediately it is converted to angiotensin 3 and this angiotensin 3 acts similar to that of angiotensin 2 okay in all three angiotensin 1 angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 3 the most is angiotensin 2 the, sorry, yeah, the most distribution is angiotensin 2 and this angiotensin 2 is most commonly seen in blood vessels. It is seen in kidney, brain, liver, lungs, adrenals. These are the site of distribution of this angiotensin Okay, because as I told, it is a potent agent which is normally present in the body. Okay, so this angiotensin normally acts via angiotensin receptors. They act via angiotensin receptors. So especially this angiotensin 2, so normally specified as A2. Okay, so this has got two receptors, 81 receptors and 82 receptors. It acts via AT1 and AT2, especially angiotensin 2. Okay, so normally as I told earlier, angiotensin 1 is rapidly converted to angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 is rapidly converted into angiotensin 3. Okay, so normally this angiotensin, especially this angiotensin 2, on the other hand, it stimulates the adrenal medulla sorry adrenal cortex it stimulates the adrenal cortex for the secretion of aldosterone for the secretion of aldosterone okay it's so because this angiotensin 2 itself is a vasoconstrictor so what happens is when it constricts the blood vessels it tend to increase the blood pressure on the other hand it causes secretion of aldosterone from adrenal cortex and this secretion of aldosterone is in turn is responsible for sodium and water retention which in turn increases the blood pressure clear secretion of this increases the sodium and water okay so this tend to increase the blood pressure okay on the other hand angiotensin 2 it has as a vasoconstrictor it acts as a vasoconstrictor and this vasoconstriction again is responsible for increasing blood 
pressure okay so this is regarding the action of this okay so among this short lived immediately converted to angiotensin 2 which has got the major effect but half life is 1 minute where it is converted to angiotensin 3 but angiotensin 3 is less potent than angiotensin 2 okay so this is regarding the synthesis or the formation of angiotensin but under this angiotensin 2 plays an important role okay coming to the receptors as i told especially there are angiotensin receptors that is 81 and 82 receptors okay so these receptors these are normally g protein coupled receptors g protein coupled receptors okay so especially 81 and 80 Okay. Coming to the each type of receptor, the first one we discuss is 81 receptors, which is most commonly distributed in vascular and myocardial tissue. Vascular and myocardial tissue. It is also seen in brain, kidney. adrenal glomerular cells adrenal glomerular cells okay so as i told these are usually g protein coupled receptors the major action is via inositol triphosphate pathway okay so normally in this pathway they will be increasing the calcium level so majority of the actions are usually mediated by inositol triphosphate pathway okay so what happens is activation of this pathway normally increases the vasoconstriction increases vasoconstriction growth and hypertrophy and hypertrophy okay whereas the second receptors 82 receptors okay so this 82 receptors normally mediate the action opposite to that of the 81 receptors okay that means here i told they are responsible for increasing the growth and hypertrophy but here it inhibits the growth and hypertrophy growth and hypertrophy okay and also here it is vasoconstriction so it causes vasodilation okay so the action is opposite to that of 81 receptors so this 82 receptors most commonly seen in brain okay then it is seen in endothelium endothelium is normally the lining of the blood vessels endothelium then it is found in kidney and also in the fetal tissue it is found in fetal tissue okay so this is a distribution of the receptors by which the angiotensin normally acts okay so in the next uh, video i'll be discussing regarding the actions of angiotensin